If you've owned or worked on these older Mercedes gasoline fuel injected engines from the 70s and early 1980s, you're going to recognize this. This is the Bosch warm up regulator for the K Jetronic fuel injection system that first showed up in Mercedes Benz in 1976 and continued on through 1985. So that covers a lot of the 450 SLs and 380 SLs that people are trying to fix up, as well as the 280E six cylinder and some of the W116 V8s. And what I've found over the last, let's say, 10 years, if you're having problems getting one of these fuel injected K-Jetronic engines to run properly, well, it won't start, it starts and quits, it runs rough, it runs rich. 80% of the time, this right here is the culprit when these are not working properly you can pull your hair out trying to get the engine run right and if you don't know what's going on inside here or even what this does it makes it even more difficult you can't believe the number of emails i get with people particularly restoring these old 450 and 380 sl they say ken well, what's going on i've you know changed power points change wires change fuel distributor change this change uh, filters you know everything and they still can't get the engine i said hey that's it right there. What have you done with your warm-up regulator? So in this video, I'm just going to give you a little background on the types of warm-up regulators, what's available to rebuild them yourself, and what's required. It's easy to take it apart and install the kits, but you've got to adjust it once you do that. So let's start over here. This was the, kind of the first one that came out. This is called the non-vacuum warm-up regulator. Note, it's smaller and there is no vacuum connection. And if you look at the rebuild kit, it's fairly simple. It has just a few items in it to rebuild the non-vacuum. And I think the engineers kept working on the warm-up regular trying to get it to be more efficient. You know, they came up with a revision right here. This is the second one, and that is called the single vacuum warm-up regular. Look, it has a vacuum connection right here at the bottom and notice it's taller than the earlier ones and then finally i think this one showed up in the early age you see this one here on most all 380 sls and that is the double <laughs> i repeat double vacuum warm-up regular and you can recognize this by these two connections here there's another way you can tell the difference look at this center section right here See, the center section is much thicker on the W vacuum as opposed to the single vacuum here. So if you're ordering a rebuild kit for your warm-up regular, you need to know which type you have, and that's really the purpose of this video. Just to give you an overview of the different types, and if you look here, you can see the progression of the rebuild kits. You know, in this single vacuum model, they added a diaphragm. And you can see the early ones did not have a diaphragm. Then when they went to the double vacuum warm-up regulator, we've got a couple things going, a big diaphragm, a smaller diaphragm, and a lot more parts that you're going to have to deal with. Now, rebuilding one of these is not difficult. It's just a matter of taking it apart. A lot of these parts are either worn out, corroded, failed, whatever. But the big challenge is how do you adjust it after you get it all put back together? You might be thinking, hey, no big deal. All that is is a glorified choke. No, it goes beyond just being a choke to enrich the fuel mixture during startup. If the fuel air mixture is way off, you can't even get your engine to start. And that's the problem I hear all the time. Well, I can't even start the engine. So I'm going to take a minute here and I'm going to stop and I'm going to take you back to another video I did on a six cylinder engine. And I'm going to demonstrate why it will not start if this is not working properly. Now watch what happens when I start to open the valve. See it drop? And it'll literally drop to zero because now, if you look over here, all the fuel is going into the bottle. And if I close this down, look at pressure. So I'm thinking, man, I can start this engine up. I can hold the pressure right there at about 0.7 bar, and just maybe this engine will start. If you recall earlier, I said I was getting a reading of around 2.2 
on control pressure with the engine cold. So we're going to set it there and then try to start this engine. Okay, we'll get the pump running. All right. Now I'm going to close the valve down until we have about 2.2 right there. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> I think that happens to a lot of people with these old K-Jet cars that get neglected. So that's kind of the symptom we were having yesterday. It just, it wouldn't, it would kind of fire, you know, you could, squirt, you could adjust this to your heart's content and nothing would happen. Now I'm going to take and lower this down to 0.7. Let's see if we can get it right, seven. Okay, let's try it again. Whoa, look at that. That's probably the best it's run. Now watch the gauge as I adjust pressures. I'm going to lower pressure and listen to the engine. Hear that? That's getting too rich. Now I'm gonna bring it back up. There's one. Now as I increase pressure, the engine's gonna start leaning out. And I get up to about one and a half bar and it quits. Okay, I'm gonna come back to 0.8. Okay, let's start it again. Okay, shut it off. Okay, now start it again. <laughs> can you believe that? Okay, I've got this car fixed. Now I can just run alongside of it when we're going down the road and I can just control pressure, but I have to be careful because if I give it too much pressure, it's gonna quit. Now I need to clarify here that we're talking about cold control pressure settings. So I hope that video convinces you of how important these warm-up regulars are. And you might be asking or thinking, hey, Ken, how do I test it? How do I test my warm-up regulator to see if it's working properly? You have to have the correct CIS fuel injection tester with an accurate gauge to even test if these are working properly. And I know some of you are thinking, well, I'll go ahead and rebuild it. Well, I'm gonna have some kits on my website. I may even have a few of these warm-up regulators that I'll sell with the kit. I'm not gonna rebuild these. I know there are services that will sell you rebuilt or exchange for rebuilt warm-up regulators. And if you don't wanna do that yourself, that is certainly a route you can go. So, you know, I may package this non-vacuum one with the kit and let you go for it. I just don't have time in my shop to rebuild these myself. So let's say you're going to rebuild one. You take it all apart, put it all together. Okay, you put it on the car, it doesn't work. Well, you haven't adjusted it yet. You have to adjust it. Now, hey, Kent, how do you adjust these? You cannot adjust these. Warm-up regulars, if you do not have the correct an accurate fuel system tester. Now I have to make a comment here. I know that it sounds like I'm trying to sell something here, but you cannot believe how bad most of the commercial testers are that are available, particularly on eBay and Amazon. They leak, the gauges are inaccurate. They don't hook up properly. So what I did here recently is I set out to build from components a reliable leak-free tester that people can get with the videos to show them how to use it because there's a lot of confusion. You get this kit with all these fittings and you wonder, well, how in the world am I going to test my warm-up regulator? I don't even know what to hook up. So this is very straightforward. The thing about my tester is I've tried to eliminate as many leak points as I could. I've gotten rid of a lot of threaded fittings that are available on other testers. I'm using a coline from Germany fitting on these ends and then I'm using high pressure fuel injection hose and these very strong pinch clamps, which will prevent leaks in and around these fittings. 
And then finally, I did away with any type of quick disconnect fitting here. This is a screw-on tight fitting that seals. Quick disconnects tend to leak. So I think I've come up with a tester that you DIY mechanics can use, and this can be used not only on the K-Jetronic with the warm-up radiators, but you can also use this tester on KE-Jetronic. They don't have these warm-up radiators. They have what's called EHA valve. If you want to tackle rebuilding your own warm-up regulator, I will have these kits available on my website. I will be selling some used warm-up regulators that I've had sitting around here for years, and I will sell them with a kit. You can tackle it yourself. I don't have time anymore to rebuild warm-up regulators. There's, there's places, good companies, you can Google it, that will rebuild or sell you a rebuilt warm-up regulator. Along with that, I'm going to be offering my fuel system pressure tester. And this is a must-have. If you're going to work on these old fuel-injected engines, you have to have a good, reliable, leak-free and accurate fuel system pressure tester. I get emails all the time. The emails seem to be growing as years go by. More and more people are having problems with their old fuel-injected engines. And I basically tell them, until you do a pressure test, uh, I really can't help you.